Firstly, once again, welcome. This morning, this message, um, I couldn't help to laugh when uh, someone said to me, she came to, to listen to another story. <laughs> but it's the only way God deals and shares with me is, is sometimes in a story, but the story is, is my own life, my own faults where I struggle, where God takes me, teaches me, shows me, and then I know, listen, I can bring this, because I have now experience. I've experienced this. I always ask the Lord, you know, if I have to bring something, I, I, need, to, I need to experience it, so that it's not my own thing coming through, but it comes out of experience. It comes from going through the Word, learning, diving into it, going through corrections, going through guidance, and at the end of the day, we find what works. It's a simple thing this morning, actually. The name of the message is The Wrong Silence. Why wrong silence? Let's just go to one scripture quickly. Ephesians 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Now, why, why do I start this morning with that? To emphasize this morning one thing, that when we go into a situation, we need to understand that we face people, humans. We have conflict with human to human. We argue human to human. We say certain things human to human. And we think it's that human's fault. We sometimes look at the physical things standing in front of us and we want to grab hold of it and we want to fight it. The word says our battle, our problems, our struggle, it's not flesh and blood. It's not flesh and blood. It's the spiritual realm. That is where our battle lies. Now, the wrong silence. How does that come into this? I experienced a few months ago a lot of pressure, a lot of attacks, and I zipped it. I didn't do anything. Little did I know that me being silent in all areas, my prayer life, my, my situation as I deal with things, I'm just quiet. I gave nothing. I was much, I was frustrated. I didn't do anything. Did it become easier for me? No. It became harder. And harder. And harder. More attacks came. I kept quiet. I kept quiet. But I felt like I wanted to attack the people. I wanted to, to go physically to that person, to that thing, and attack it, would I have succeeded in anything? No. I kept quiet. The devil, what did he do? He said, shoot, you're not going to say anything. Great. I'm adding more. I'm adding more pressure. Can you see where this is going? Suddenly, the thing quickened in my heart. The word of God doesn't return void unto him. It accomplishes that what is sent for. So in other words, for us to accomplish certain things, we need to speak. Example, walls of Jericho. Did they dance around and, and mumble around the walls? 
Did they just... One day, no, one day. No. They, they shouted. A, a voice came out of them. They spoke. And the walls crashed. Why does it say in the word, speak to the mountain? Did it say mumble to the mountain? Did it say think to the mountain? Did it, did it say silence to the mountain? No. It's speak to the mountain. Okay, what do we speak? We speak the Word of God. We speak the Word of God in our prayer life. The mountain is in front of me. The person, the thing. What do I do? I don't attack the person. Because is that going to show what God is for me? It's going to show, oh, he's a Christian. Look how you're attacking me. Now you want me to believe what you come out of your mouth. Huh. It is. The battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against flesh and blood. The devil is going to come and try to plant a seed in the person or the thing or the situation to get you to become angry or to be silent. Silence in this respect is the wrong silence. Yes, the word says, a quiet mouth is wisdom. Face to face with the situation. Unless it's the Holy Spirit prompting you to say something. But the devil's going to attack you, attack you, attack you. I'll go into my prayer room and I'll sort this fight out. Lo and behold, a few weeks later, situation turned. Because I went into my prayer room and I started speaking what I have on the inside. The victories, the promises, the thoughts of God, I started speaking it. That person confronted me again. It was a different person. The person actually turned around and said, I'm sorry for the way that I spoke to you the other day. I didn't have to take him by the throat and shake him. I didn't have to badmouth him back. He came and apologized. Our silence mustn't be in our war rooms. Our silence mustn't be in the private moments when you are alone. Because the devil is going to come and he's going to whisper in your ear. He's going to plant something in your ear. Ah, you silence again. You have nothing to say again. I know. I've, I've, I've experienced this. And I'm not joking. I sat in, in the briar room one evening. Just didn't feel like praying. I just sat there. But I had all this frustration. I couldn't, I couldn't find the point to come and speak about this. Because every time I spoke about it, it felt like things got worse. But then I had to realize, to whom am I speaking to? And when am I speaking about it? My speaking was towards the wrong people who didn't support me. My speaking was to the situation that just got a bigger smile. Oh, he's still talking about me. <laughs> so I'm still winning. Until the moment I realized that if I can sit down and I speak to my God and I declare what He has for me, His promises, and all those small things that make up to be a powerful blow to the devil, a situation came. And I didn't have to confront the person. The person realized that ah, I was out of line. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Who won? Not me. 
God won. He won. The devil lost. When we look at the power of God's word, you know your own experience with the word of God. You know what it has done for you. You know when, when you spoke something and you believed, and when it manifested, you didn't let go of that word. In prayer, you spoke about it. You called upon it. You stood upon it. It didn't return void. There's a, a very beautiful scripture. I'm going to read it in Isaiah 55 verse 10 to 11. I just love this the scripture with regards to not returning void. It's from verse 10. It just explains it so beautifully. And I just want to share it before I go on to my next point, which is, the heart of this whole message. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed to the sower and bread for the eater. So is, my, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return empty, but it will accomplish that I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Seed for the sower. The parable of the sower and the harvest. It's linked. When we, when we as normal Christians, strong people in God, faith believing, speak to someone the word of God, that seed that's produced there is going to grow. Now you ask me, how about? You speak to this one guy once and where's the watering? Hmm. When we pray for George, when we pray for South Africa, when we pray for the world, isn't that watering? Someone might have given a word to your brother. You don't know about it. You don't know either. Your brother won't come and tell you, or your sister won't come and tell you. Someone gave a word of encouragement and they left. Now suddenly everybody's praying. When we pray to a country, to a world, it's all the seeds that have fallen will get watered. That's the power of our prayer. Because when we pray, we, we, we don't always remember that single person that we prayed for. We covered the whole of George. We covered the whole of South Africa with prayer. With the glory and the anointing of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. He does the watering. And he waters every time. Waters every time. You might have received the word. You might have forgotten about it. But when we pray for yourself, it waters. God maybe gave you a small word of scripture. That encouraged you at that time. Promised great things. Life got hold of you. You forgot about it. Type of thing you went on. Life is difficult. Life is hard. And then suddenly, bam! Breaks the fruit. Breaks in this amazing tree of abundance that ever God has spoken in your life. It came from the water. A prayer, not being silent in our prayers. Not being silent in our day-to-day -day moving when you're alone, driving, friend with you. Listen, how do you feel? Can we pray? Yes, let's just do it. It's watering. The seeds have been watered. That's why I feel this morning that the harvest 
is ripe again, like it says in the Word. Why? Because we are praying and praying and praying. The seeds that have been sowed, you might have spoken to a hundred people. You might have, have ministered to millions, thousands, I don't know, in your course of your, your period with Christ. And you haven't seen much result. The word will not return void. Your prayers over situations will not return void. It might look dark and bleak. Now, yeah, it's true. But there's a promise. There's a promise. It will not return void unto you. So that if you minister to a lost person, a hard, 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 hard person, that heart is so hard, the heart is so hard, that you can't break it with dynamite. It's okay. It's okay. The Word of God finds a crack. Why do I say that? Because when you minister to someone, and the Holy Spirit suddenly tells you, listen, ask him about his family. One crack. Oops. How did you know that? How did you know to ask me about my family? I don't. The word of God, the Holy Spirit, unctioned me because there was a crack. So yes, that heart is hard. But there's a crack. And what's in beneath in that crack? When something breaks, there's a little bit of soil there. It's never a clean break. It's, it's not dust free. You know, if you break a rock, there's some dust, some particles. The sea drops on top of that. Soil. Water. Add some water, it becomes mud. It's going to grow. Continuous prayer over it. It's going to make it germinate. What happens? It pushes. It breaks the crack wider. The roots start to form on the inside. Grabs hold of the heart. Uh, yeah, I remember that guy, that lady told me about this. Why am I thinking of this now again? It's the watering and the germination taking place. It's the word of God that's not returning void unto him. It's busy working. It might have been five years the gap. It's fine. But there's a reason you planted a seed. So yes, the laborers are few. We know that. But hey, is the watering few? Is there a, a water scarceness in heaven? Is the Holy Spirit limited? No. There is something still of substance in the heavenlies, in the Holy Spirit, in prayer, not being silent, but standing and believing that that one person that you met, and that one word you gave to him, or to her, has still the power to germinate, to break free into that crack. Break that heart to receive the answer that he needed. It's still there. Our situations now look bleak. It's dark. But have you ever put on a small candle, and I mean like a small candle, in a very dark place, isn't it funny how you can, from a small candle, I think it's those little tea candles, the small ones, you put it on the ground in a dark place. How much can you see suddenly? Do you see only that piece there? Oh no. Through that darkness, you can actually start seeing something. There's, there's something in the corner there. There's something there. I, I, can, I can negotiate myself in this room. So what am I saying? The smallest piece of light that comes in is enough to make a difference. The smallest word that you can give someone is enough to make that person realize 
Wow. I didn't, I didn't expect that. Wow. God, God is really, really, really there. Wow. I never knew that guy knew that of me. How did he know this? No, 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 he didn't. It's the Holy Spirit that revealed it to us. Because you are precious. Because God has a plan. Yeah, we always hear God has a plan, God has a purpose. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can do all these things of, a, of Christianity, you know, like running on the streets with the mic. You were not maybe called to do that. You might not be called to, to run like an evangelist in the street with a microphone. You never know until you met God to find out what your purpose is. You might, like I said last time, you might be a one-on-one -on -one person in a quiet place. Right here, right here. One-one. That's where your strength lies. You might be a person that, that's outgoing. You can speak to a crowd. You don't know until you met God and He shows you. You might be in the medical area. You might be in the construction area. You might be a general person meeting another general person. You never know. But whatever you speak, and not being silent. That word is not going to return void. That word that you speak over the lost in prayer, God has revealed it to me. We always think, God, oh, let's pray over George. George, Lord, we give George to you. We pray over this. We pray over that. It's just a prayer, y'all. Uh -uh. uh -uh. It's not just a prayer. Because there might just be one person this evening or this morning or this afternoon that suddenly has an opportunity to take his life. And one person in George or one group in George realize that there's, there's some sort of need in that area. Let's pray for people in a bad situation this morning that's contemplating taking their lives. You don't know the person that you're praying for, but that word that came out of your mouth. It's going to find that person. Why? Because the Lord God Almighty and the Holy Spirit is everywhere. He's not isolated to only this place. Oh no. Oh no. He's everywhere. So if I'm standing here and I speak and I pray over someone that's about to look at pornographical images, I can speak it and I can rebuke that moment there. That guy didn't know, I don't know him, but the Holy Spirit will find that person because he knows, listen, you're not supposed to look there. Don't, don't. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly scroll. I'm, I'm just going to scroll. Don't. Pray for him. Boom. You're, oh, my wife is coming. Oh, that's close. Simple example. I know. But that is how it goes. A simple prayer directed to something, to a situation, not being silent, can save more than you think. The more we speak, the more will come to God. The more we speak, the more people will realize what and who God is. That person might be confused. I don't know why. why I'm, I'm, not, I'm not list for this now. No, I'm going to put it off. Next week, again. No, I don't know. No. I, don't want to, I don't want to look at this anymore. No, no. I think I need to go to church. I don't know what's going on here. What, I, I don't have this urge anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. That was the Holy Spirit. That was the seed that was planted. The water that took place. And God has a plan and a purpose for you. Each and every person that you meet has a purpose. No matter what type of person he or she is, and we have in our surroundings, we have a couple of characters. I know. 
but never cease your words. Never. Hold fast on that what you were praying for. That you spoke about. If something comes against you, it's not flesh and blood. Because if this has to happen the whole time, it's going to get ugly. It's going to get physical. It's not going to look good. In anything. It's more breaking down than actually lifting. Attack, yes. I will be attacking someone next week. I'm a human. I go through bad things. I go through situations. We all are. We all have this perfect little person with the halos and all those things. We have our days. We have our issues. We have our problems. But, Lord, forgive me. I believe I've done wrong. I can feel it. I've done wrong. Lord, Help me to, to approach that person and ask for forgiveness. Powerful moment. Powerful moment when you confront that person again. The same verse around. I just felt I have to come and apologize to you. No, it's great. I accept your apology. Yeah, but I said ugly things, you know. Yeah, I know. But praise God. Let's Let's pray about it. Let's, let's talk to one another about it. Why did you come? Why? Oh, yeah. Now that definitely was something to do with the Holy Spirit. Because this is not me. I'm not this type of person coming and apologizing. Anything like that. It's a, it's a simple situation, scenario. But anything like that can happen. Where a simple word of forgiveness, a simple word of, of encouragement, or just support can mean so much. God moments. We need to be sensitive. And that's why I feel my heart so urgent this morning, or this, this actually the whole week, not to be silent. I'm not saying that you have to go and stand on the corner with a mic. If you have to, great, go for it. God will lead you to that. But when things go wrong, don't be silent. Don't. Rather, get these legs up, lock the knees, and stand and speak. Stand and speak. In your quiet place. Even when you're just driving, just speak to God. Just pray. Just minister. Even if you just minister to God and just talking to Him, you know what you're doing? You're breaking spiritual boundaries. The devil is trying to come against you. He cannot. The Spirit cannot because you're ministering to God the whole time. It's up and down, up and down. He has no place to come in. There's too much light. There's too much power in the Word of God when you just speak to it. Just speak to it. You don't need to go and do the whole ritual of prayer. This, I need to do this and then this. By the time you get to the prayer, you're actually tired. Step in. Lord, I did something wrong. Lord, I just walked out of that office. I you know, that, no, pray a blessing over you. Walk away. God will guide you. The Holy Spirit will guide you through all things. But I urge you this week not to be silent. When things go bad, when you look at your bank account and things like that, it looks bad. Pray. A promise. Lord, you're my provider. You're my provider. We have heard countless testimonies in this ministry of God providing. 
we can just rewind a few weeks ago and listen to that message is there where God provided. He provided ugly situations. God provided. My wife and I, we sat last night and we spoke about our situation. It's not looking good. But we both agreed. Just got to stand and believe. We need to understand that God is in control. I have to, to really, really focus myself on it. Because things are going bad. I need to constantly tell myself that God is in control. God is in control. And what happened the moment when I kept on saying that? A situation turned for good. Small situation. But something small can motivate you to step up even further. To trust God even further. A small thing can make a big result at the end of the day. We all know this. We sometimes forget it. Don't be silent to the word of God this week. Don't. Because the devil is going to put more things. Don't tell me that you now are super mature and, and wise and all those things just because you're now silent. Please, no. The word of God says speak. Speak to the mountains. Speak to the situations. Declare are some of the words that he uses. Nowhere does he say mumble. Nowhere does he say think. And then something's going to happen. It's speak. It's declare. Yes, think upon the word constantly. Yes. But you need to speak it. When you speak, God created heaven and earth. Let there be light. Poof. He didn't mumble it. He spoke it. The words that come from God have creative abilities. It can create things that you never thought were possible. Faith is the substance of things not seen, but the evidence. Evidence. I spoke it. And I spoke it. And I spoke it again. And I declared it again. Bam. Came to be. So next time when you pray or think of the harvest and you pray over the harvest or a loved one, harvest, someone that's in a, in a bad place, part of the harvest, or someone that has never heard the gospel. Your prayer, your words, have so much power in it that it's going to create an opportunity for Yaniti coming from whoever and ministering to that person. You might be praying for Kwesi and Sarki is going to come and say, but hey, you don't know this. But if you pray over it, you pray over a situation, someone will come and give you a word that's going to break everything apart. My last thought before I end off. The Lord gave me a, a little picture of... Um, of a person standing and um, being silent and things are happening and things are going on and um, I could actually see how the devil is packing bricks around him. All the bad things happening. Building a wall. And I'm and it's as if I'm, I'm standing in this person's shoe basically and and I, I can see him looking up, you know, thinking, yeah, is God for me? You know, yes, he is for me. Yes, okay, all right, okay, all right. And the devils keep on packing these bricks, packing these bricks around him. Till eventually the bricks are so high 
that it can't see the heaven part anymore. It's just so tall. And I asked the Lord, and I said, okay, now, when is this going to stop? What, what, what now? They need. <laughs> I hope you guys understand this group. Yes. <laughs> then he took me, pulled me up, and I looked from above. And I looked at the wall, but the wall was that thick. It was paper thin. But the image from inside, it's bricks. You know how thick a brick is. <laughs> if you're construction, you Tall buildings, three layers of bricks, please, <laughs> you know, or two layers or one layer, depending on how you want to go. But you see the brick, but you don't know how thick it is. Took me above and I saw this. Literally, couldn't see it. It's a thin, thin brick. But the devil comes and he explains to you that you know in a bad place. You are now surrounded with bricks and walls. And then the word came to me and said, speak. And when this person spoke, what happens to paper? Flies off. So, to end off, you being silent stops you seeing how thick the wall is that the devil is trying to build or making you believe he's building around you. The power of the devil is paper thin. The word of God has power to build to create, to make new, to bring life, bring resurrection, make new things, old things new. What does it, I can carry on. What does the devil do? Bad, bad, bad. Sorry, it sits at one word, bad. Bad, bad. But the Word of God has so much power if we speak and not be silent. Break those walls this morning by speaking. We are free in Jesus' name. We are not bound in Jesus' name. We are free. We are free. We have the power and the ability inside of us to speak and stand and believe. Go this week with one thing. Speak. Don't sit and be silent when you can speak into a situation. Don't be silent. You're tired. I understand. You're very tired, you want to go to sleep. I understand this. But speak. If it's a one minute prayer, powerful one minute prayer, can be more powerful than an hour of prayer. And I'm not saying an hour is wrong. I just spoke to Uncle Nick this morning and I said to him, Thursday I experienced a, a period where I just couldn't stop praying. Praying in the spirit, I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. When I'm in the car, when I'm alone, so I just can't stop. It's Holy Spirit driven. But when you come to a point where you need to spend time with God, and you're like, I can't keep my eyes open. One minute. Can change a situation tomorrow. Coming from here, it can become two minutes can become three minutes. can become five. comes from here. God knows you, Father. God knows what we're going through. You understand this? 
but he also understands what you have in you. Because he put it there. He put it there. So the devil is trying to tell you that you can't. Just remember, you see a brick from the top. He didn't tell you how thick this wall is. But God's telling you how strong his word is. Let's speak up. Let's close our eyes. Father, Lord God, we thank you this morning, Lord, for this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you, Father, Lord God, that your word spoken, no matter what season, Father, it carries power. It carries anointing. It carries a strength to break free from all situations, Father. Lord, I pray this morning that the people will go out, Father, Lord God, and experience this urge, Lord, for one minute urge to start off with. Working it up to a full period of prayer, Father, Lord God. Not being silent in the situations, Father, Lord God, where a word of God can be spoken and deliverance can be manifested, Father, Lord God. Or blessings can be produced, Father, Lord God. Or provision can be given, Father, Lord God. If there's silence, we cannot get this. But if we believe, and we stand and we speak, Lord, what you have given, what you have put inside of us, Father, Lord God. Lord, I strongly believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, that it shall be breaking free from all sides, Lord Jesus, Father. We shall stand, we shall show, we shall be those that will say to the others, my God is alive, look and see what he has done in my life. Look and see where he has taken me from to where I am now. It's my Lord is alive and well. He's not in tomb. He's not dead. He's alive and well. He has given me power. He has given me authority to speak in situations. Father Lord God, I pray a special blessing, an activation blessing, Father Lord God, in each and every person, Father Lord God, sitting here and listening to the recording, Father. Lord, I pray, Father, that wherever they are now, Lord, that they will meet you and they will speak to you and they will recognize you, Father, Lord God, and they will excel, Father, Lord God, in the Word of God that has power, that has power, Lord. It will not return void unto you, my Lord. It will accomplish that what you have sent it to achieve. No more silence, my Lord Jesus, Father. We will stand and pray. We will stand and speak, Father, Lord God. If it's deaf ears hearing now this, Lord, it's fine. The power of the Lord Jesus Christ will open those ears, Father, Lord God, because there is seed in that ear planted this morning, Father, Lord God. It shall Come through, Father, Lord God. In Jesus' name, my Lord. I give you glory, my Lord. I give you praise this morning, Father. For you are true and you are the only living God. In Jesus' name. Pray for everyone. Special blessing, Lord. Be with them this whole week and bless them, Father. Out of their socks, Lord Jesus, Father. That they without a doubt know who you are, Lord Jesus, Father. We give you glory, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.